Oh, he's been hurrying. All right, so let's um, download your assignment and your notes. We're going to go over that. I think people will be able to join us pretty soon. And then I'll go ahead and share screen. Okay. So today we are going to go over uh, the next chapter where we're going to work with Cython or C Python. Uh, it's going to use the C compiler, you will know. And so we are going to take a look at how we will be able to work with Cython especially in Jupyter. Um, you can use your Linux machine um, or Visual Studio code as long as you have the C compiler. Okay, so let me get my um, notes up real quick. Sorry, I have to attend another meeting right before this. Okay, so in unit five notes, let me share screen here. For chapter four, we are going to work with Cython, like we said. Um, so very important in the exercises for today and the lab this week is you are going to use C compiler. Um, if you don't have Visual Studio community or code installed on your computer, you will need to install C compiler package. Um, now, in various systems, you're required to have, you know, the, the development side, which uses the C, C, C++ compiler. So, Cython overall is an extension of Python. Um, that basically is that you are able to write things in Python. Um, or define functions using Cython. Okay. So we'll take a look at the syntax. That's a little different. So what, when you run these type of program, it's going to use the C compiler to build your program. So it is slightly different than your typical traditional Python program. Um, the reason why we want to use Cython is we can, we want to speed up the performance. So you can build, um, scripts. And it's going to use efficiency. So basically, the syntax that you have for most part is going to look very close to Python. But because some of the we can use the magic command with IPython or, um, you know, on top of that, we would be able to execute it using the compiler and it's faster. So Cython syntax is going to be the superset of your regular Python. Therefore, there are certain components in your program that's going to look different. Um, so, for example, uh, starting with the actual file extension. So, when you write a Cython source code um, file, you are going to use the .pyx extension. That means that it's going to use the, the C file in order to execute the commands that you incorporate inside that that particular code. Um, and Cython is going to use the static compiler, which is what you see on a lot of the, um, you know, the notebook like Sage Notebook, uh, Colab, or Jupyter to be able to interpret and compile your program. So it would act as an interpreter that looks like an online interpreter, but to build your program, it has to compile. And all of these notebooks or the interface that you see, um, that you see compiler, it is based on Pyrex. So therefore, because of Pyrex, this is why your extension is PYX. It's just an extension of your Python using C. Okay. So that means that we can wrap the C libraries, which is what you commonly see for Python, um, to our program and be able to use fast C modules to execute your Python code. So what it is, is the top, we are going to have Python still, right? 
And on the bottom, the second level, what we were, are going to see is we're going to use the C extensions. And that's what it is. Okay. And you can find the documentation located um, from the link here. Now, to install C Cython, what you need to do is you can do it several ways. Okay. If you're using Linux, you would need to make sure that you have the build essential. And this is going to bring in your um, C++ build packages. That means that if I don't have this, I won't be able to build my C programs or program that requires a compiler. So on the Ubuntu, if you're using the Ubuntu, you first need to bring that in. If you're using an Apple system, if you don't have Xcode, it's recommended that you use Xcode. It's like how we would use Visual Studio on Windows system to write our code. So for an Apple system, um, the, the environment is that you need to get the Xcode environment, which is used for development. And with that, it's gonna, we are gonna be able to introduce our uh, C++ extension um, for, or for the build, okay? So I have my Linux open, so I'm gonna show you that and we're gonna do some of that in our lab this week. But importantly, okay, you need to make sure that your Cython is installed. So if you're using multiple version of Python, like two and three, make sure we use pip three. Um, if you if you only have one version of a Python install, you can simply use the pip. So, um, let me pull up the. I added some stuff. So let me come back here and let me pull this up for you. So let's go to Cython documentation. So this is the documentation we would start with installing Python or C Python or Cython. So as you can see here, if you're using pip, you simply use pip install Cython. Now on Windows 10 and 11, this is going to be added to your site packages. Okay. And if you're having a hard time using Cython, it's possibly because you didn't have your path. Uh, environment path set up properly. So you will need to go and add that to your system path and your user path. Um, now, in addition to, you can also do upgrades. So they recommend that if you're using Linux, you need to make sure that you bring in the build essential package, like I noted. And then you also need to make sure that your build essential is in, incorporated with your Python 3 development uh, package. So for for Ubuntu, you simply can run sudo apt-get install build essential and then add the Python 3-dev um, if you're using that. If you're using Mac OS, right, make sure that you have Xcode. If you don't, you need to install Xcode to build. And then for the Windows system, it would be best if you already have Visual Studio with C++ because it uses a C++ compiler, right? So I don't have Visual Studio installed on my computer. I actually uninstalled it a while back because I just need to free up some room. Um, so I ended up having to make, to go and install the download build tools or download and install the build tools. So you need to make sure that your C++ build tools at least is in your system. So if you have never used C++ or code in C++ or using Visual Studio, you will need to make sure that you install this. But if you install Visual Studio, normally you would it would bring in right your build tools with Visual Studio. So it all depends. And on the Windows side, you need to make sure that this exists either through Visual Studio or install on its own. Okay. So that's important. And then on the Linux side, you got to make sure that you are using uh, or you installing the, the build tools. So that is added here and it's also found in your documentation. So it's important because even for the GCC that's present, we got to make sure that we can we can build it. Okay. 
Um, so these are some of the important things that you need. Now, even when you are doing the assignment throughout today, make sure that you have your Cython installed. It's gonna drop it into your build, um, your build packages. And, you know, so that way you will be able to access it, okay? So compiler, Cython, and then any additional things that we're gonna use today. So let's touch back on the assignment here, okay? Um, so for number one, we can answer what is Cython? When should you use Cython? So in the notes on the first page, we learned that Cython is an optimizing static compiler for Python programming language and extended Cython programming language based on Pyrex. So it makes writing C extensions for Python easy. So in the case where you want to write C extension, you can use Cython. And Cython is ideal for wrapping external C libraries. So if you are writing Python program and if you want to use C library, which are also abundantly available, then you can incorporate Cython and embed C Python in your application. It allows you to speed up the execution of your Python code. So that means that we would need to have a compiler in order to build our program. So this is a way that we can have Python code that works with C library. And it uses, since it is Pyrex or based on Pyrex, your file extension with C Python or Cython is going to be .pyx, which needs to be compiled because it's going to produce a C file using Python command. And you will see this more in the lab. So we have Python code that uses C file or C libraries, right? But it executes using Python command. Give me one second, let me close the door. So do you have any question regarding number one? You can find this in chapter four or unit five notes. Now, we always want to refer to the latest right, uh, documentation updates. So when you revisit this in the future, I highly recommend that you look at the documentation um, because sometimes there are changes in how you would adapt or incorporate Cython with your operating system and your um, IDE. And there are lots of tutorial where you would bring in packages. So if you're using PyCharm to write or other uh, IDE, you still would, it would still require that you add the package, but ultimately it's important that we have C++ build essentials uh, extension package. And that is gonna allow us to be able to compile our C libraries or our C files. Okay, so that's important. That's one of the main component to this. All right, for number two, um, how do I install Python and what is needed to run Python script, Cython script? So if you're using pip, you can use pip or pip3 and you would say pip3 install Cython. Okay. And the one important element to this is your C compiler. Okay, and that will come from your build essentials C extension package for development. This is needed to run Cython script. And so when we install some of the C or C++ IDE, right? This is gonna come in with those IDE like Visual Studio, Xcode, 
Now, Xcode is used to write Objective-C or Swift um, for iOS. What you would see is that it does require, it's, it is still going to be compiled with C because it is C-based. Okay. Any question? Okay. So we want to kind of run through this so you have a general idea on how to work with Cython, and then we would do an exercise. Okay, so Cython code, we know that unlike Python, it needs to be compiled. So what's the difference between a Python script that we've been writing thus far up until this point and some of the script that we're going to be running this week, right? Um, so for the regular Python program, it uses an interpreter and the interpreter is going to run line by line, right? As it executes. So every line that it's going to interpret, it's going to, it's going to execute the task based on whatever code that you have for that line. For the compiler, coming back to the introduction to Python, right? If you are compiling the program, it's going to take a look at your entire code, right? Compile it. So when it compiles it, right, your container goes on stacks and, you know, your all, all the elements of your function definitions, that's get added to stack. So it needs to compile the entire program in order to run instead of running it line by line. So that's the true difference when you're using Cython is that it's going to compile very similar to what you see with C++ program. And our file is going to be PYX for the file extension. It needs to have a .c file in order to execute the Cython code. So it requires the Python extension module in order to do this, okay? So your .c file is then compiled by the C compiler. And so then it's gonna import directly into your Python session. The rest, your setup tools is gonna take care of this. And so in that case, when we run, First, it's going to compile with the C compiler, and then it's going to execute and output. So ultimately, we are going to treat our .pyx file very similar to a C file. Okay. So there are several ways that you can build your Cython code. Okay. One way is to use or write setup tools, setup.py, and this is a Python file. This is a common way that you see. So if you look at like troubleshooting tips and stuff for Cython, you would see that, you know, there are recommendations on how you would use your setup tools or setup.py. And this is part of your Python. Or another way is to use PyX import. And this allows you to import in Cython. And the way that we're going to treat this when we import it, it's going to take the Cython file and treat it like a Python file. Okay. So it still would require some setup. The third way, if we want to use Cython, is we can use a command line utility. And this utility, it uses a .c file to from a .pyx file. So that means that it's going to manually compile the C file, and it's going to be able to execute the Python code. So what are these, right? There are CLI that's included for Cython. So command line where you use the actual command to run the execution, which uses the C file. 
you can import in Pyrex, basically, right? And, and Pyrex files is going to also use the setup to be able to build. And setup is going to use the build tools. Then, or you can write your own setup, setup tools, which is the common way that you see. So today, what we're going to do is we are going to use an existing, right, um, interface that we can run Python and Cython code. Many of the university, they would use Colab or Jupyter or Sage. These are the type of online or local interface that we can edit or write our code and execute it in one spot, right? Um, very similar to what you've seen with Rebel or other online interpreter. And Jupyter Notebook is used more than in computer science. You can use this in other areas in, in sciences, right? It allows you to document and run your code all in one spot. Now, when we do an installation like this, what it's going to do is it's going to put that package on our system and it's going to make our system locally available to be able to run the application. So you can install Jupyter or Jupyter Lab. So there are two areas in Jupyter. There's Jupyter Lab and there's Jupyter Notebook. The notebook just has more features in how you can incorporate documentation and, and files and different things, where Jupyter Lab would have a little bit less. Now, if you visit their website, you've probably seen this earlier, right? Um, there are instructions on how you would be able to install specifically. So Jupyter Lab, you would just type Jupyter Lab like this. And ultimately, you're going to get the same, you know, interface. You have a cell where you write your code and then be able to, to run your code on that one interface. And I'll show you. So if you use Jupyter Lab after you install, you simply call on it. Jupyter dash lab. Okay. Now, if I want to install the notebook where I would just tell it to install notebook and then once I have your the notebook installed I just call on it to execute and this is done in command line so you can do this on Windows Mac or Linux okay now Ubuntu Linux is a little different um, I'll show you in a little bit on how it, it uses the command but you can always refer to their basic instruction Another way, I don't recommend that way, this way, but you, you can also use this with Conda, is to use their um, online projects. Okay, so let me come back to here. So if you Google this, right, um, you can go to Jupyter Notebook. And then you can have the Try Browser option. What this is, is it's using your browser application, but it still would require that you install all your package locally. So your browser application is still going to access your Python and every all the packages locally on your system to be able to build. Okay. So you can do it this way, and then you can go to the, the notebook that's or the project that's online. Okay. So now I'm going to show you that I did run the, as you can see, I install, right, um, the notebook or the Jupyter Lab. So I did the pip install notebook here, as you can see. Okay. Yeah. And you can also just install the, the Jupyter Lab. So you have options to do this. Might as well use the notebook. So once you install the notebook um, or the lab, you can call on it. So in order to execute, here is my Jupyter Lab. And it's going to open it up like this. 
Okay. So you are going to have an empty cell at the top. And what it's going to do, we can create multiple notebooks. But remember that this does take up space on your local system. So it's going to store it in the directory that's linked to the program, right? So as you have a larger notebook, that's just going to take up additional storage. So you can also save it in a, a specific location. So it allows you to bring in files, right? To incorporate, you know, libraries and other things. So where you code is going to be in these cells. So what I can do is I can run individual line or I can write a longer program in a larger cell, okay, and be able to execute it. Okay, if you're familiar with Google Colab, it's going to look very close to this, okay? So when you open it up, right, it's going to give you a new notebook or a new interface you would need to click so let me see here let's say that i i run the application you would need to click not the console but the notebook okay and it's going to open up your notebook and then that's where you're going to write your code and you can always add yourself right in the in following by clicking the, the add cell option or copy the cell. So if I want to repeat this, I would do this for copy. If I want to add more cells, I would just click insert cell like this. So it's gonna add more, right? Like if I click this right here, see how it adds more line for me to fill. And then you can copy and paste, you can run, you can stop. Right, and then you can also do markdown and raw. Okay, a lot of the university they prefer this over your IDE because it's you know they have application that would use this to grade. Okay, all right. So this is a Jupiter. This is your Jupiter, and and if you look at my 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 browser here see how it says localhost and the number so basically what it is is it's creating my it's a it's making my system right the local server that contains various notebook for jupyter and you can also run jupyter on mac os and linux like i said any question okay so when you're using uh, Jupyter or Sage or these type of notebook to write your and run your your programs or your Cython program, what you would see is that you would need to use your commands and magic command because these interface that you see these notebooks on um, the beneath the notebook is ipython <clears throat> and ipython uses commands and magic commands okay so this is why you would see the percentage symbol so what we can say is that when we use the setup tools for cpython files we would be able to write our program with the .pyx extension. So in this example, when you look at this, it looks like a Python, right? Program. So that means that I can write my Python code, save it as a .pyx, but in order to execute that code, I need to make sure that I have my setup tools running. Okay. So to build, I need to execute a file that sets up for my .pyx file. Otherwise, it would not know how to build. So earlier, when you hear about the setup tools, all that is is another script that we would run, right? Okay, using Python command. And then we would execute the second script after that. 
So here in step three, it shows you that in order to run this or build this, we need to execute this setup.py. Okay. And then from there, what we're going to do is going to make a session. And what we're going to do is we're going to then be able to execute our .pyx. Okay. So that's how you're able to run Cython um, with your setup tools. Any question? Okay, so I also put a link for how to use um, Jupyter Notebook, okay? But you can also use Visual Studio. So in the next part, we're gonna take a look at Jupyter Notebook and how to use it. Okay, so let's come back to our assignment. So for number three, we can answer, how do I build a Cython code? First, I would need to write a Python file that would represent my setup tools. So you would write a setup tool setup.py. And just like the note show, right, that would be the Python file that I would run first. Then I would use the Cython CLI or the command utility to produce a .c file from the .pyx file. So the Pyrex file is going to contain my Cython code. And when I use the command line utility, it's going to make a .c file. And that file is used to compile and import from Python. So when using Cython in um, Jupyter today, you are going to see that we have to load the, ex the, the, extend the extension package, right? And we are going to... Um, run the magic command for Cython. Okay, any question? I modified the next section a little bit, um, so I will re-upload the document because um, I think some of the things that I added on there might cause you some confusion, but you can also install your notebook Okay, so this came from your notes. You can put it verbatim from your notes, so you can summarize it. So the easiest way that we can run Cython is to use one of these notebook interface, right? Like we can use Sage Notebook, Jupyter Notebook, Colab. Uh, there are quite a few products now. Okay, so Google Colab also use IPython which you can use with the extension. So, um, for Visual Studio, right, you can also see some information about VS Studio there using Cython. Now, when we do the next part, you would see that we are going to use Cython and we're going to define functions and we are going to declare, right, using C++. Okay. So in Python, normally when we define a function, we just use the keyword def or def. But since we're using Cython, you need to make sure that that function is being recognized. So the syntax for this is going to be cdef. That allows you to declare things that are readable, right, <clears throat> in C++ or C perspective. So anytime that you need to define um, 
variables, uh, container, um, any declaration that you need, you need to make sure that you use CDEF. So this requires that we are going to type our container like C, C++. So that means that when you're declaring a variable, you got to make sure that you put int, long, double, you know, the data type before the identifier or the variable name. So in the next part here, what we're going to do is we are going to define an, a variable called i. And this i is going to hold integer. <clears throat> so in Python, we simply say i is and give it a value because it is not strongly typed. <clears throat> But in Cython, you would have to say cdef, data type, and then the variable name or the container name. So that also allows you to be able to define everything, multiple identifier or container in one line and initialize the values. So I can say cdef double, which is the data type, a comma b comma c or a comma b and then give assign the values right so you can do it all in one line and not having to repeat c def double b c def double c right we can save the trip and do that okay so the syntax here is very similar to c c plus plus the only difference is we don't finish it out with the semicolon and we use c def before we declare. Okay, any question? All right, so in the next part, we here you can see that when we're using Python, when we're declaring the variable, that is treated like a label. So what that is, is you're gonna refer to where or the location in memory where that object is stored and the values associated with it, okay? So here, if I de declare A is a string hello, right? It automatically know that A contains hello, which is a string. So we create an object A and that object is located in our, in RAM or in memory and at that object, the storage, the content is going to be a string hello. Now compare this to C or C++, right? We would have to say int A, right, is hello. I'm sorry, a uh, string A is hello. Then that means that we are going to declare the string name A, right? That's the container and the content is going to be hello a group of characters. But for CPython or Cython, the way that you declare it, you would have to specify that you're using Cython and you would use CDEF, okay? And then after that, you can either assign the values or you can initialize the value in the following line. So we can statically type this and that would make the compiler optimize when it runs or when it builds our program. So we need to make sure that type data type is included. Now, unlike C or C++, your function doesn't require type. So you can define your function like how you normally would in Python. Any of the container like variables, um, you know, arrays, things like that, we would need to make sure that it is typed. So in this example, we have a function call or a method called def example. And just like Python, we would say def example colon. And then we want to declare two variables, i and j. So you would say cdef because it's static typing, integer int i comma j and initialize j at zero. 
And then after that, we can continue with the task for our function. So here it would have a for loop. We're going to return j, and then we would call our function. So in a Cython code, it would look like this, right? If you have a function, inside that function, we have local variables and use those variables in our loop, return, and then call the function. Okay. So cdef is specifically used for container, where our s, our function, doesn't require that. Okay, so you can you can take a look at the example now, because this is built on top of C. Okay, you are capable of using C data structure. So you would have struct, enum, type def, um, which is what you normally come in C, what you would see in, in C constructs. All right. So here, this example, we're declaring a variable initialized at zero. In the next line, we're declaring B, which is typed as double. And if we want to cast the type, right, to A as double, we would do this. B is, and then put the double inside the arrows, right? And then specify your container name. So I talked a little bit about the function, treat it very close to what you see with Python, right? We can pass variable, but anytime you use variable container, remember you gotta put in the type, same as C or C++, right? You gotta say int A, int B, double A, double B. Okay, otherwise it's gonna throw an error. Okay, so here you would see some example we passed the variable and we're going to return and like most things for most python program you can combine statement like this and it is a little bit more forgiving so in cython we can do the same we can say return a if a is greater than b else b right in one line and that's fine so there are some exception in how we would static type and we would use the the definition, the C def. Any question? Okay. You notice that there's a CP def here compared to this one. That's like a C def, right? So here it talks about perform type checking with the argument. So when you are typing the variables, very similar to the cdef, when you declare that, you can specify. So here I would have cpdef int max hybrid, and we would then use int a and int b, or you can use cdef. So It would still be producing the same thing, but ultimately, um, this allows it to check. I think when it does the the copy. All right, so that gives you the variable decoration. Let's look at the next part. Hold on one second, let me download your version of this because I broke over. Actually, I have Okay. Okay, so we would work on number four. Okay, and I will also edit this a little bit, but, um. So two things that you would need is number one, you are going to need your Jupyter. You can use Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook, doesn't matter. So you would, you would need to install your Jupyter. 
and then you can um, you can call on your Jupiter or you can use I think they said to use let me double check the commands here Yeah, so you can you can call on Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab. That's up to you. Okay. And once you open it, just make sure that you click on Jupyter Notebook because if you call on Jupyter Lab, it's going to ask you which one. No dash. Okay, so I would use my command prompt or command line, install that, and then from command line, you can issue Jupyter Notebook. Okay, now based on the documentation, you can install two things separately. You can do Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Lab, if you want to install Jupyter Lab one word, and you can install the notebook. Now, if I want to simply install the notebook, I can do a pip free inst install notebook like this, and it would also install the Jupyter notebook. Okay, so this is option. And then once you have that, you are going to open it up by typing in the command Jupyter notebook. So you would find, so here you see that I use Jupyter Lab and it start the server. And then so once it's open, you just click on the notebook option. Okay. And it would look like this. So we would have a, a brand new file. Now, the next important step is to make sure that you have Cython, okay? Remember that packages don't appear on their own. So what you would also need to do is you need to install Cython. And I did this a while back. And I can also show you it's the same on the Linux side. So if you're using like the Ubuntu virtual machine, you would see. So on the Linux here, as you can see that I installed the, um, so let's see. Yeah. It should tell me that it met the requirements. Okay, so it's satisfied. You might want to use sudo with that. Okay, so it tells me that Python is in the package, and that's where you want is in the site packages. Now, if you're running Windows and when you try to execute some command, that's what we do next. And if it's throwing you error, okay, this is how you fix it. You open up advanced system settings like this, okay? And this is where you set your environment variables. You click on environment variables. You see how I have the site on here for the user. So you can do a new and then type in your new path, or what you can also do is go here to path, click new, right? And then put in your, your variable name, and then 
make sure that it is from your um from your directory okay usually microsoft windows 10 and 11 it will put it in your user account under app data local microsoft windows app you know python and then all the way to the site packages okay so when you install it would tell you where that is you see that right here okay so mine is under this right here so I just need to make sure that that path is set on my environment variable here. And then I also need to make sure that I check, right, my system path down here. So I can, sorry, I added, okay. So make sure that you, because sometimes we install it for the user and sometimes that we install it for the entire system. So you need to make sure that your path is set up, okay? And then close. Click OK, apply, and then that's it. So I found that if you don't put the path in, what will happen is it won't be able to use your that particular package on or your packages on your um, IDE or even even your system when using Python package. Okay, so once you have your notebook installed and Cython installed, very make sure that we, we remember to do that, right? This part right here, very important. We open up our notebook and in this step here, what you would see is we are going to load the extension Cython. Now, if you don't have it installed here, it will not be able to load. So it's gonna throw a bunch of error. Like it cannot find the module, just like you've seen before when, when, you know, when the module is not in the proper place, okay? So in my notebook, after I type this in, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm I'm running a command and it says load extension Cython. You can use upper lowercase, lowercase is okay. Then you're gonna press Control Enter on your system because if you press Enter, it just drops a new line. So Control Enter. Okay. Now, if for some reason when you write the next set of code and it's throwing error, you need to add a cell and you need to reload. Because if I loaded the extension, let's say earlier this morning, and then I come back and I write my code later on in the afternoon, it's not gonna be able to, to, to load it. So it's gonna tell me, oh, it cannot find the module. That's okay. What we can do is we can use a reload command or reload exe command to reload it because remember that things go into ram and ram doesn't always retain things permanently okay so if you let's say that you started the project you loaded the extension and then you go and you do something else and then you come back right it might have been written over so what you need to do is for the application you got to make sure that you reload it okay and this is, you know, I was just doing, it's exactly what happened to me, right? I did, I started working on this and then I went and did something so you have to reload. So that's important to remember. Then after I have my Cython package loaded after I installed on my system, I would then use my magic command. So what I'm telling Jupyter here is that I am going to use Cython by using the magic command. We talked about this before. So in IPython, these two double percentage symbol indicated that we are going to pull in, right, the module. It's like import, okay, to be able to build out our code. Now, the cool part about this is you don't have to save it as a .pyx. 
you just continue to write and run your code and it should work. You don't have to write all in one shot, right? I can write pieces of it, test it, and then be able to add more to it. So what I did here was I, I define a, a function called hello, and I want that function to print out hello world, right? And in order for that function to work or see the output of that function, I need to call it. So for one cell, I wrote this in and to add the cell, you just click a plus sign here, right? And it'll just add more cell for you to write. And then, so I would then press control enter, go to the next cell. Then I write the line to call my function. So hello world. So at this point, you can just click the play button. Oh, sorry, let me put that here. Let's X this. <laughs> it didn't want to cooperate with me now, so hold on one second. Let me set this. Okay. Let's reload it for a second. Okay. So when you call that and you saw earlier that it should be able to output your hello world. And what I can also do is I can also add it to the same. So in my instruction here, what I tell you is in one cell, this is cell number two, we're going to type in hello world, okay? And then in the next cell, we're going to call and it's going to show you the output like this, hello world. And then we can add another piece of code. So what you can do is you can test them in chunk and be able to and be able to output. Okay. So coming back here. Let me see if I can put that. So we are going to continue to use Python again. Let me reload this just in case. And then if you want to save this, right, you should be able to save it, your entire notebook. So you can go, right, save notebook or save notebook as. And then you can type in your file name. So let's say we want to say lab five, right, ex4, for example. Any question? You can always delete it, click the list, and then you can move up or move it down. So you can rearrange it on how you want it to look. Okay. So the hardest part, I think, is to get all of these things in. And then after that, you can write chunks of your Cython code. Okay. Now, as we mentioned earlier, when we're using cdef here, basically we're declaring int a and we initialize it as zero. And then after that, what we're going to have is we are going to have a loop. So we are going to use the range. So it's going to go from the zero, right? And it's going to increment. So we are going to do a running sub and print a. So anytime that you're using Cython, remember, especially for Jupyter, we're going to make sure that we add in our magic commands after we load the package or the extension. 
and then we will continue to write. And anytime you're using variable or container, we would use theta type. If we're using regular function, we can just use DEF. Okay, so for the next part, what it's going to do is we are going to use the annotate. And this allows us to do code analysis for Cython. So when you simply add in the dash dash annotate and your your loop is still exactly the same along with your variable. So when I come back here and I change this, I would say space dash dash, right? Annotate. And I run this. What will happen is you are going to get a different output than when you don't have it. Okay, so having this piece right here is going to show a little bit more details as far as it's going to implement the analysis for Cython. Okay. Any question? All right. Um, so I want you to take a look at it by adding the annotate. Get the screen capture after you run it and then do the comparison. How is this different than this? With, with it or without it, right? Compare the difference when we add the annotate to when we don't have annotate. Any question? Okay, one second, let me find my previous stuff for. Okay, let me see if I can open it through here. And you can also download, you can save or export your notebook. Um, let me get the path for this real quick, sorry. So you can always um you can always add additional right notebook when you click the plus sign here it will just add additional tab. So if you want to have multiple notebooks you can you can give it a name right you can always go back to the original you can edit so now if you if you keep on writing on all of these, right? You can run them separately. You can run them all together. So you can continue to do that. Okay. So I would click this. Yeah, I'm running virtual machine and this together. My system is protesting right now. So I'm not getting much response in different areas. Okay. So after we completed four, we would then need to make sure that we would static type the variable. Okay. And this is pretty easy. You can follow this format. So we would start with CDA, right? Um, and what we want is we want to define 
here, different colors, so it's easy to see. We want to create the variable and we want to assign it this, okay? So we can say double, right? And then we would say, um, let's say we would say PyVal is 3.147, okay? And if we want to cast this, right, to flow, or from flow, so sorry, this should be flow. If we want to cast this into integer, right, so that means that it's going to drop the decimal point and it's going to keep whole numbers there afterwards. So when you see that, if you come back to our notes, it shows you how you can cast it, right? Um, right here, okay? So we simply can just reassign it. PyVal is, you know, uh, int PyVal. So what we can do is we can come back here and on the next line, we can say PyVal is, right? And we would cast it to int PyVal, like that. Okay, so we would add this into, and before that, you can use your magic command, so Cybon. I have these files, right, um, but I couldn't open it right now, so simply just write it. So it's pretty easy. You would use magic command to find your variable, right, and cast it. And then we would do the same thing for the next one. But in this one, we're going to make a function. Okay. So we want to do a function that's going to calculate the volume for the cube, given the width is 3.5 inches. Okay. So. We would then start with Saitam. And then since it's a function, so you would do a def. And we say find, what is it, cube core. So now in the in the function itself, you have to do a cdef, right? Because we need to define our um, variable for the width. Is oh sorry, I forgot. Um, we would do a double double width is four point five. You can say four point five zero. Okay, and we want to take the width, right? And we are going to cube it. Okay, so in the next part, we are going to make sure that we take this and multiply it three times, or we can raise it to the power of, so you can use however you want to do that. Okay, so if you just want to use the operator, we can say width, um, times with, actually, we'll say wall. Initialize that at zero. So wall is going to be with times with times width, or you can use the pow and raise it to the third power, however you want to do that. And then we would then want to print or return, right? And then after that, you can call Q, well,
So the only difference that we see with Cython besides this part, right, is to use the CDEF for the variable declaration there. And then once you declare that, you can just freely use it afterwards. Any question? So you can plug that into your Jupyter so you can see your output. You can take a screenshot of it. Now, if you run this in IDE, right, make sure that the package is there. And then um, we would need to use the setup tools and all of that. So we'll see some of this in the lab when we write it in a regular editor and run it through, um, you know, either the Linux system or Windows system. Okay, so if you miss the beginning, it doesn't matter which OS you're using, you have to have C++ build tools, right? If you install Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, for C++, likely that you already have it. If you never use C++ on your system, then you need to make sure that your, your build tools for C++ is there. And in, in Apple, Xcode would use uh, C build tools, so you would be able to use it if you have Xcode. If you don't, you have to install, okay? All right. Um, in number seven, it tells you to define a static type class in Cython that contains members to access the attributes and display the values. Okay, so let's talk about class in the next part. So we touch on functions, we touch on how we would use cdef in variable. So in the next part, we are going to create class. Now, very much like your variable or your container, you have to use CDEF, okay, when you define your class. Because it's really associated to a location that's going to contain the attributes or the components of that class. So here we would have member X, member Y, right? These are the variables, so you have to use CDEF. So in class definition, you have to use CDEF for Cython. Okay. And you can still do the, you can still do the init decoration and you can do the self.x and self.y like this. So when you do the CDEF, class and its name, you explicitly declare the type, right? That would be intended for the com the compilation as it would be point becomes the type for this class and its variables or the members is instantiated using CDEF inside that class, okay? So it is slightly different than what you've seen in regular Python. And so you can do a lot more with this. So in this case, what we're showing here is we have double norm and then we, we're going to pass, right, P as an object for that class. So point P and we're going to return the value after the operation for the computation. So in the sharing declaration, you can use the Cython and we can make it into a PXD suffix, which contains C decoration, and we can implement PYX suffix, okay? So the PXD file is gonna be the, ex the external decoration. So um, if you took my 38 class, you remember that and, and at the beginning of this class, we, we talked about like using external module, right? You can make module that would contain classes, variables, and then bring it in just like how we're using module 
or libraries that are written by other developers, okay? So when you're using variables that are not in that PYX file, but it is de declared externally, the file that it's coming from in order for the PYX to see it is called the PXD. So think of it like an external module that contains, you know, decoration for your variables or containers. So what that does is it allows you to use this file to declare many things. And the compiler, it's going to go there to pull your decorations before it builds. Okay. So your definition can contain any C type, any function. So we can have container, we can have functions, we can have classes. Okay. So any external part to your code. Right, we would refer to that as a PXD, and that's normally used for declaration. And when you want to use that module, you would use the C import statement. So just like before, when we use import, right? Import panda, right? In this case, when you're using Cython, you just say C import and then the the file name. Okay, see? So it will be like this. Or we can say from, right, the module name, we would say C import and specific function or class or container that you want to add. Okay, so the example of this is they have a PXD file called dishes and they declare, right, uh, a number of things, functions and struct. Because this is Cython, so you can use C-based structure. Or then in the, my PYX file, I simply do a C import statement. So I would say C import dishes or from dishes C import, right, spam dish. Okay, and this is the example that I obtained from the documentation. So this is how you can use Cython external module, right? And then be able to incorporate that with your PYX file. Okay, let me see. All right, so let's come back to seven. Static type class uh, that contains members to access the attributes to display their name, their values. So we would then start with Python. Sorry, I'm not able to get my file access yet. So then we are going to do a cdef. Right, and if you want to refer to the example from the notes, you can come back, okay, to this example on page six. So we we'll say class and then its name and then any, you know, like this. Now, do you have to use the init? You, you should because it actually, it, this is a constructor, so it's going to construct this, but if you don't want to to uh, use the init function, you don't have to, right? Python automatically does that in the back for you, okay? So we can highlight this. Okay, so we're gonna say class and then use capital for your class name. So let me I'm just going to use show, okay, 
and then we want to tap it in a little bit. So we're going to then define our variable. So we can say int for our one. That's the first member. And then see that int for two. Okay. And then if I want to do a function with this class, I simply just define a function. So we would say df, right? Um, display var. And here I would need to make sure, remember that when we pass it, okay, when you pass it, you need to make sure that you have its type like this. So int bar one comma bar two and then I would I check off here int bar one. And then lastly, for the main, I just need to call it, right? So here we define the class, right? This is our class. And then we, inside we have member method and we have member variables. Okay. Any question? You can do it other ways too, but. Okay. So for the next few questions, we are going to get into some of the method or function that C uses. So. So refer to page six or seven. And we talked about PXD. All right, uh, arrays. So for Cython, you can implement arrays. And when you declare your arrays, just like how you declare your variable, you just gotta make sure that you type it and you use CDEF, okay? Now for here, it talks about how it is at the low level C arrays is the memory view. So C arrays allows you to have the same type container. You can have different a group of elements in it, but it needs to be the same data type. And it would store it contiguously. So same thing as your array. So this allows you to implement a larger container for a collection of items. And to view the address, very similar to what you learn in CSC++, you can use the ampersand symbol, right, which is a reference symbol in C. And what that does is it's going to show the addresses of the actual location, okay? So what we can do is we can use the ampersand symbol and that would allow us to use the print TF. So in C, um, you don't do the regular print, right? Print with this, the, the parentheses. That's really C++ and Python and additional newer languages that would use print with the parentheses. In C, you actually do print F. Okay. So. Now, this printf function works if you have libc studio um, included in your Cython module. Okay. So how do we do that? We would use the Cython magic command, okay, 
if we need to print an address of our variable, we simply declare our variable. Then we would do an import statement. So you would say from libc's stdio, c import printf. Okay, and then we would use printf, right? And we would print out the address of a. So it would show like this. Now, every system is going to be different. So when you do that on your system compared to your friend's system, as it would store it in different addresses, of course. So you are going to get different output. So make sure that you refer to page 10. Now on the pointer, right, this is the example from the text. But let me come back here, okay? I put in the screenshot, and this is my fix from last year. So if you want to do, if you want to do um, the memory address on Jupyter, it is slightly different than what you would normally see in like IDE or other things. So here, what you would need to do in Jupyter, of course, you need to load the Cython extension, then you are going to use the Cython magic command, declare your variable, okay? And if I want to print X, I would, I can do a print F if I do an import, but if you're using a regular print, you need to tell it that this is a hexadecimal and it is an ID of the, lo the ID location of the variable, and it would look like this, okay? This is how Jupyter is using the, how you can print out the addresses in Jupyter. So you can reference this if you want. So this works in Jupyter. You're going to find the example in the book. It's not going to output anything, okay? Because Jupyter, the way that it's Jupyter is designed, it doesn't understand how you write it like the book described, okay? It might have been an older version or whatever they were using, but this is how you print out the, the ID of your variable. Any question? Okay, so you would use the ID function. So refer to this, you can test that out. Okay, so I talk about um, how to do that, but for the printf. So if you use printf, okay, we can refer to this. So use that example. Okay, so we would use Cython magic command, declare our variable, bring in, import in the libc's stdio file, and then do the printf. Now for nine, in order to just use the pointer and display the value on the pointer. So I found that when I did this last year, when you use the example in the text, it's a little different than what you've seen on the Jupyter, right? So um, like I mentioned before, sometime when you test it, like these code on the um, Jupyter, it's going to output a little different. So in C, the asterisks indicate that it is a pointer. So you would define your pointer variable. And then in this case, right, we would reference and dereference. So we have a pointer as your, your pointer variable. And then we would then use the ampersand to indicate that this is the address of a, okay? And it's going to point to A in the same type. So the asterisk symbol is used to be able to 
initial or create or declare our pointer. Then after that, we need to make sure that we use the dereference operator, which is your ampersand sign, to be able to say that this is the address. Okay. Any question? Now, what if I don't want to print out the address like number nine calls for? What if I want to, oops. What if I want to print, print out the value, right? So what you need to do is you need to print out your pointer variable, right? After you dereference it. Okay, so we would use this. Because it takes me a little bit to get things going here. Okay. So you would declare, so you can run the script in your Jupyter and see what it outputs. So make sure that we dereference it. And then once you initialize it with the value, you can print out the pointer variable and it should be able to have a as 3.0. All right, any question? So refer to the example and you can create your variable for pointer and print that out. Number 10, in the array, you have given an array that you have six elements. We are gonna write a Cython code to print out the location of the array. So for the array, Okay, first you need to declare an array. So we would use C def double array, and then here we would replace it with the six. It is a single dimension array. Now, so I put some details there. You can print out using the index value. So on page 13, you will find that this is how you will be able to print, right, your array address. So use this example on page 13. Okay, so we just need to now, in this one, they are dereferencing the first index, and it's going to print the first index address. And why is that? Because it's actually the start of your array. So, you, so printing the first index of your array is fine because it is contiguous. So your array actually begins at this address. So when we print the array like this, it is the same as the first index item, which is because it starts at that particular address and it would continue to the next element and so on. So that's why you're getting the same output here. Okay. So for number 10, okay, we can use this example. We just need to modify this to six and then we can do a print TF and then ARR or we can do print TF, right, the reference ARR course index. Now, if you want to make this into a pointer, right, you would declare a pointer, then we would dereference that pointer. Then we would print out the pointer like what we did in the last one. Okay, so for the array, you can do it both ways. So I would 
copy this, and I'll put this in here. Okay, but I did write all the code from before. Any question? Let me fix the number. Okay. So this is my code from last year, right? Um, I did the init method for nine. Then this is my code for 10. So we use ampersand here. And then for 11, we're using the pointer. And then here's the array. So you would start with the Cython magic command. I would then define the array and I call this array one or ARR one. It contains six elements. <clears throat> I do uh, an import statement or a C import for printf. And then I simply print out. I would do a print ARR one. So when you do this, it would then print the location of your array, or you can do a print F. Right, ARR, uh, we get our D reference stat, so AR1 index 0. And that would also work as well. So either or. That was nine. Okay. So I'm ahead like one. Let me fix the number. Okay, for 11, the memory views in Cython. So you're in Cython, the type memory view, basically it simplifies access for the data type. So it is an object that maintains a reference, okay, on a specific memory area. And it doesn't have the memory, but it can read and change the content. Okay. So memory view is an object that is used to reference a certain 
location that would store your data. Okay. You can use it to read or update content. So it is a universal interface and it simply is, you know, it simplifies the process so it saves time when you use memory root to access. You can find this also in your notes, memory view. Okay, we're almost done. So just a couple more. So in the next part, we're going to talk about NumPy and Cython. So you can implement other module with Cython uh, or other libraries with Cython. And as they are written in Python, you don't need to use the C import. You just do import. We would only use the C import if it is C base or C. Okay. So in 12, it tells you to create a Cython program that uses NumPy. And we're going to slice and copy the array values between two arrays. So we would have two arrays and we would copy the value from A to B and B to A. Okay. So I, you would start with the Cython magic command and we would need to bring in the, the NumPy. So I would say import NumPy as NumP just like before. But see, since this is Cython, when I declare my array, I want to make sure that it is C def. It has a type. And I want to not initialize my array because in arrays, you have to say how many elements, so it creates contiguous space for the elements. So the way that we can get around this is we would use the colon, comma, colon, and we would declare our array name. So I have array A, right, and then also array B. So what I'm doing is I'm going to slice A and I'm going to put it on B. So after I have this set up, I would then generate random values and the shape for my array is going to be five by two. So five rows and two columns. Same thing would be, right? We recall from last week that this makes it easier for us to match up and slice. So if you have different dimension, you need to scalar out, right? We got to make sure that we scalar so that way it matches so it's easier for us to slice if it's different dimension. So I just set it up to be exactly the same shape. So five by two and five by two. Okay. You don't have to make it five by two. You can make it other dimension. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice right from one to the end, and I'm going to put that on to B. Okay, so it's going to cut right from one to the end of my array, which is the default here is blank. So that's going to go to the end, and it's going to copy that, and it's going to put it on my array B. And if you want to... C, right, you can do a print for the array or you can, now the addresses are going to be different, of course, because there are two separate location, unless I point, right, array, the content of array B to array A, then it would just be the same address from the array A for my elements. So it's going to take the value from array A 
copy it, and then put it into already B. A better, more efficient way is to use the pointer, of course, but this allows you to do the copy with slides. Any question? Okay, no question. So you can find the ND array um, after memory views. This is on page 13 going into 14. It shows you. So I used these example and how that's how I was able to write the code for that part. And then additional resources on typed memory views. As we said, that it simplified access to data type reference specific memory area so that's on page 15 and there's example for numpy okay so how do you profile this um you can you would use annotated right earlier we saw how we can get the annotated view you can use the at dash a option. Okay. So when you run this in in a console, you can say Cython dash a and then your P, your Pyrex or your PYX file name. So that would allow you to be able to have additional annotation or details of your program as it runs. Okay. Now in the last part, it talked about directives. So directives can be used with the compiler and those are compiler directives to accomplish like call related tasks. Okay. And you can implement that with your decorator symbol, the at symbol. So whenever you see that in Cython, right, you would know that it is a compiler directive. So in this case, we decorated the function, Cython found check. So just like before, you can decorate a function to be able to make it into what you see with the compiler directive. Okay. So for 13, how do you add compiler directives to your code? You would use a decorator, right? That we would see that it is the add symbol or context manager. You can also include a comment at the beginning of the file. Or you could use the command line options. So your book has example with the at symbol. I believe that they also show the other example. So this is how you would be able to add compiler directives. Okay. So where did I get that information? If you look on page 17 on the bottom, you would find that here. Okay, so if I wanted to add the comment at the top, I would say with Cython and then my directives. So you can do it this way and then make sure that you add the comment. Or if I wanted to do this in command line, I would say Cython dash X. That's going to be your directive. And then you just need to say what directive it is. And it is true. Okay, so there are three ways that we can do this with the decorator, right? When you wrap it in, in the context manager in your CLI or command line, okay? So there are various examples for you to see there. So with this, we can not only use 
right time it, but be able to tell it to to execute specific directive in our um, based on our profiling. Okay. So what you would see here is they do some benchmarking. And with that, it should show also the internal time and the details for each of the pieces of the code. Okay. As it, it, as it compile it. So a little bit different from what you've seen before, right? Um, and that would wrap up our chapter four. So in the lab this week, make sure that we have our Linux virtual machine. We're going to come back to this. Um, the reason why I come back to the Linux virtual machine is I want to mitigate some of the extra step that you would do between Windows and Mac OS, as some of you ha might have like a mix, like you might have a PC and the others might have Mac OS. So, um, we would use this Linux uniform wise and we'll be able to write our little script and run our script. Okay. Any question? All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.